I've never had the opportunity to speak to Ryan Kavanaugh, who's the head man behind Triller and, uh, you know, was in the ring after that fight. Uh, and so I thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about what happened uh, last Saturday, two Saturdays ago in South Florida, and where does Triller go from here? And so without further ado, uh, let us go to the uh, Zoom machine and say hello to Ryan Kavanaugh, who is kind enough to join us with a cool background, uh, a faded background, uh, or what is that, a blurry hey, background? Hey. How are you, Ryan? Hey. I'm great, Ariel. How are you? Thanks for having me on the show. It's an honor and a pleasure to be on. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, so a lot to talk to you about. L let me ask you this, Ryan. Um, how do you feel about the last card, about what transpired in South Florida? Happy with it? The card itself, not not the business it did, just like the actual product, the event. How do you feel about it a week or so removed? You know, I have very mixed emotions. It's actually, it's a good question because it's a question I ask myself actually. Um, and it, you know, it's very easy, you know, I guess the best sentence is to play Monday morning quarterback for me too, you know, look back and say, what could I have done differently? Um, but I, I think I won't know how I feel about the card until I see what happens over our next few cards. And, and what I mean by that, and I sorry to answer this. So it takes a long answer is that, you know, most people don't know. So we we had a contract with Holyfield to fight a number of fights, which we still do. And his first fight was going to be with Kevin McBride, who was the last person to knock out Tyson. And McBride is only two years older than Vitor. Um, and uh, we saw McBride um, and saw some footage and some training and got very concerned. And we actually went to the commission and said, we're concerned about this fight. And we actually, I think we were told we were the only uh, promoters to ever in the history of promotion try and talk the commission out of a fight. And the Holyfield camp, and we're not, we love them, we love working with them, but they were adamant that this fight had to go on so much so that they brought it to an arbitration to say, you have to let this go. And it was a real, under all pro rules fight. This was not an exhibition dance fight. And we said we were very concerned about McBride, not Holyfield. Holyfield, having seen what we saw, was in such incredible shape. Works out. He never stops working out. He's a specimen of a human being. And um, it was a quite a, a, a battle. Um, and uh, it came down to us, um, honestly, when, when, when like, it, it was going to be a fight of us saying we don't want someone to get hurt. So when we turned around to put this card on, the way we looked at it was, you know, Vitor, yes, he he was younger, um, as we all know. He's, he's He was a I think two years younger than McBride, so almost the same age, but not a pro boxer. He's boxed once, right? He, he was MMA, and we all know that MMA has a um, disadvantage, let's just say, when it comes to pro boxing. So we actually thought it was going to be a very fair um, kind of card. There was an age disadvantage, but there was an MMA disadvantage. Um, the reason that I say, and sorry, I'm going to stop not talking one second, that I don't know yet, is if you talk to Holyfield, what – the world perceived happened didn't happen. If you talk to Holyfield, um, Vitor apparently stepped on his foot, which I haven't seen the footage yet, which made him trip. And that's why it looked like he fell. He swung really hard, which we all know he did. And that was the knockout swing. And he connected with Vitor. Vitor would probably still be uh, in the hospital today. And missed, which put him into the ropes because he swung so hard. And Vitor came back aggressively, but Holyfield is notoriously a slow starter, meaning, as he says, his strategy is, let me get hit, let me feel how he punches, and then I'll come out with my returns. And if you look closely at that footage, he was blocking, he said he got hit once, if you ask Holyfield, he got one hit, and the rest of it he was blocking. And so the stoppage, in his opinion, was the problem, because he's like, I would have come back, and you know, I, I knew what I was doing. Now, I can't um, first of all, I know probably less about fighting than, than most people, so I can't opine on that 100%. But the reason I say time will tell is that, you know, we're going to hopefully I think Holyfield will end up, you know, fighting someone again that's his, you know, I guess not hopefully people see as better suited, you know, whether it's Tyson or someone like that. Um, and Vitor is going to fight again and we're going to see what's going to happen. And I think you know, no matter what was going to happen here, we would have gotten shit. I mean, when we did the Jake Paul fight, the very first Jake Paul fight, um, before the fight, I don't remember, you probably know this better than I do, there was press writing how irresponsible we were, we were because Jake Paul wasn't a pro athlete and Nate Robinson was and was endangering Jake Paul. 
On Tuesday, after the fight, press came out saying how irresponsible we were because Jake Paul was a pro boxer and Nate Robinson was not. And, you know, we were endangering Nate Robinson. So, look, we were not happy with a round one, what I'll call, you know, not they're calling it a knockout, stoppage, knockout, whatever you want. Certainly not what we wanted to see. Certainly not what the audience wanted to see. But I'm not sure yet if that's the end of this story has been written. My concern with that, and I, and, and I, and I appreciate the, uh, the thoughtful responses, should a 58-year-old who talks like Evander Holyfield talks, who moves like he moves, who's been through the wars like he has, should he be fighting anyone? Even if it's a fellow 58-year-old, it feels uncomfortable, at least to me, to watch him fight anyone. Do you not have any concerns about that? Yeah, I do, and I'm mixed right now. Um, you know, I think coming off of Tyson... It felt, you know, we saw this amazing spectacle of a fight. Everybody looked great. It felt great. You know, it, it, it was um, what we wanted to see. And I think um, we kind of expected something similar here. Uh, you know, I didn't, I'll tell you, having seen Holyfield and him being an idol of mine for so long and watching him train, he looked like, I mean, he's in better shape than I'm in. It was insane much, but he's in better shape than most people are in. And so, He's always been he's always been a quiet guy. It's not like all of a sudden he's more quiet or talking slower. Um, and he's strong and fast. We have a lot of training footage of him where he is hitting very hard. He's hitting very fast, and he's sparring against twenty two year olds. I'm saying sparring. I'm saying knocking out twenty two year olds. You know, in twelve round matches, time and time again. So I don't know. I, I'm I'm just as mixed as you are right now because. I went in thinking this was going to be, you know, the odds run on, on Holyfield, the betting odds. That's crazy. You know? Yeah. And, and when you look at him, I was for sure. I thought Vitor was getting knocked out for sure. You thought he was going to not. Wow. Uh, is there, is there any truth to the idea that uh, Evander thought that this was going to be like a, a, like a friendly sparring thing and, and Vitor flipped the script on him? Well, um, so, so what we, we did because this was a, pretty thought out process between all of us. So the original deal with Evander um, was that it was all pro fight rules apply um, uh, him and, and, and McBride, two minute rounds, you know, eight rounds. Um, and there was, everything else was judged pro. Um, when we did, when we moved it to, and that was the same thing that was going to happen with Oscar and, and uh, um, uh, uh, Vitor as well. When we moved it, um, we kind of said, look, we're happy to call it. We would say we didn't want to use the word exhibition because exhibition has gotten so many different words. Like, it, you know, exhibition could be non-scoring. It could be scoring. So we're like, look, we want to make sure it's scored like a pro fight. We want to make sure it's treated as a pro fight. And you guys are fighting as a pro fight. In fact, so much so that we negotiated in the agreement that the fighters would use their best efforts. That, that's the exact words we used. Um, and the day uh, we agreed that we would tell the commission, we wanted to get it approved by the commission as a pro bout, specifically to make sure they were healthy enough to fight like a pro bout. And that it would be signed off by their, you know, doctors and their the, the various pieces. So what we did agree is that the week of, we said it won't go on box rec. So we didn't use the word exhibition. It's not, it wasn't called, we specifically said it's not an exhibition. It's under all pro fight rules. The boxers will use their best efforts, you know, except for the rules we adjusted, which are two minute, eight minute rounds and bigger gloves. But the boxers will use their best efforts. There will be scoring. There will be judging. There will be knockouts. Um, it just won't go on box rec. So even when I read people saying, oh, it was an exhibition. I mean, exhibition has so many different work terms to it, right, and what it can mean. But it had every piece of a pro fight with the exception is it didn't go in box rec. There have been some reports about the business it did. The buys, are those accurate? Dan Rayfield reported, I think, 150 k Are you able to confirm or deny? Um, well, first of all, what I can tell you is if Dan, if, if he's right, he's a soothsayer because as I think most people in this business know, you don't get your, your pay-per-view for a while. It's antiquated. So we don't even know um, within, call it a stone's throw of, of what our pay-per-view was. We know what our digital was. Um, and I can tell you, oh, we, we don't report it, but I can tell you that we did the same on digital that Jake Paul's last fight did on digital. Um, meaning the one that you just, uh, I think you were, um, the, the Woodley one, you were at the Woodley one. 
Um, so we don't know what our pay-per-view is yet. Um, and no one in my camp nor anybody we're working with does. So I don't know where he came up with these magic numbers, but um, he may be referring to some digital numbers, but um, we don't say what those are. I can just tell you that we are almost identical to the Woodley numbers on digital. So if he was maybe mistaking those for, the, like, are you saying it's maybe in the ballpark of 150 for digital, but not for the entire number with pay-per-view? Um, it's not, how about this? It's not close enough to 150 that it would be an honest mistake, but it, it could be around what, what somehow information he's getting. Um, if you know what I mean? Okay. So it's not like it was 146,000 or 152,000 that it was close enough to say, oh, that's what it was. But, um, we certainly did more than 150 overall. We just have no idea. Um, I've got people saying that our numbers are going to be through the roof and I got people saying that our numbers are going to be so, so. Um, and so I, I just don't know yet. One thing that I've always said about Triller is I root for competition. I root for as many promotions as possible. I think a lot of fans um, don't like that because they want to see all the fighters under one umbrella. It doesn't matter if it's boxing, if it's MMA, so that they can see their favorite guys fight each other. As someone who roots for the fighters to make as much money as possible, uh, I like competition because if there's competition, there's, there's leverage, there's options, y you know how it is. Um, what I've always been concerned since the first event last November, and I've said it publicly, I'm not breaking this news, is I'm worried about the spending. Uh, Justin Bieber, I know, costs a lot of money. I know all the, you know, having the Trumps there costs a lot of money. I'm sure having Holyfield there costs money. Tyson costs money. At some, like, I want you guys to stick around. I'm worried that it will be, as I've said, like Affliction, who spent all this money and then kind of ran out and then had to sell to, to the UFC. Why spend so much money on things that maybe don't help your fights themselves or to build fighters or to get the biggest names the acts are great and all i don't have to i don't have to pay for that you have to pay for that and there's a reason why justin bieber isn't showing up to you know other sporting events it's probably because he costs a lot of money or the trumps why spend so much money on that stuff um when you could probably be spending it on talent actual fighters it's a really good question so our model so first of all every event uh, believe it or not, whether it looks like it or not, we've been dropping our expenses. So, you know, we, the first event, we hired a lot of consultants and a lot of third parties and a lot of third party production entities. Each one, we bring more and more in house. So we've actually managed to significantly reduce our costs on every event. Um, I think the, you know, we can break it into three pieces. The, 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 the Tyson event was a tremendous success for us. As you know, it was the sixth highest pay-per-view and, um, you know, we don't give the exact number, but it was, you know, made us quite a bit of money and, um, we were very happy with the outcome. The Jake Paul event, we did very well on, we made a profit, which is what matters. Um, we did spend, I'll, I'll agree on the second Jake Paul fight, we overspent. Um, but one of the reasons we overspent is that we were actually looking to see, can we bring a younger audience into boxing? So specifically focusing on that one. You know, by paying a Justin Bieber, by paying a, a Black Keys, by playing a Doja Cat, and, and I'm adding on all the things you didn't. And by paying uh, uh, Sweetie and Pete Davidson, and you know, I mean, we went all out. And one of the reasons is that we wanted to see because boxing, as you know, is kind of a shrinking sport in kind of the single demographic. It really has become this like nail over fifty sport. We're like, can we bring enough to this? sport where we can actually give something to the younger audience to the call it 17 to 30 year olds that they want to watch all of it and so we knew going into that event we were like we're it's kind of a long-term investment we're going to spend and we're going to spend on things that i think someone referred to it it was like it, it was like um injecting the entire internet in your vein <laughs> uh -huh. um and that is what we tried to do because we wanted to see hey can we get enough of a young audience interested to watch it this time so that when they see it, they go, oh, that's pretty cool. And next time they hear there's a fight club event, they'll come back. And, and I'll tell you what it did show on that event. As you probably know better than anybody, um, typically your digital to your pay-per-view, like digital is like 25%, maybe less sometimes. On that event, we were almost 80% digital, which means that most of our audience was that young audience right and so although yes we way overspent on that event no question about it um we were able to draw in a young audience who 
did come back and buy. And we're using that to build in what we call our Trillerverse, which, as you know, we do on the first Tuesday of, of, of every month at Madison right now. And it's a small subscription model. So what people, I think, forget is that we own Fight TV, right? Mm -hmm. And so but the more users we bring onto the platform, even if there's a cost of acquisition. So whereas others may overspend on an event, and that's just it, right? If we, if we overspend, but we bring another I'll make you have 100,000 paying users to our platform for future events. And we have 1,100 events a year, right? There is an ongoing annuity for us. So, um, but on this one, I think you saw, we went with smaller acts. They were still great, but we didn't go with the Justin Biebers. We went with acts who were good and well-known, but weren't costing us a fortune. We did spend money on the Trumps. It wasn't anywhere near what people reported. What was it? Um, Can you tell, what does it cost to get the Trumps to, to sit in your broadcast booth for four hours? What does that cost? Um, well, if I didn't have a confidentiality agreement and I wasn't worried about, okay, if it was anybody else but them, <laughs> it probably would break it. But somehow that's just one I don't want to mess with. Okay, um, fair enough. But you know what people don't realize is you know he started obviously in boxing. I mean the guy was a boxing both promoter and aficionado, and you know like him or hate him, and and we have nothing. It's nothing to do with our politics. That's why we gave two feeds. We're mm. like, hey, you could have fifty cent or you could have Trump. Like he knows a lot about it and he is the ex-president and he did have 73 million people vote for him. Now I don't have to say what, where we agree with them or not, but that means there's 73 million people that, that probably like his opinion and he's smart about this particular field. So I can tell you this, it wasn't enough money that's going to change their life in any way. Mm. Um, so it did have a lot to do with their, their, I think their love for, you know, this particular fight. And he's known Evander for a long time. Uh, Junior, is he involved in tr in Triller at all behind the scenes? Is he no. investing? He has no financial stake in Triller. Nothing. The Trumps have no. People have this weird conception that somehow the Trumps are tied to us. We have zero tie to the Trumps whatsoever. There was a. It was a. Just the anecdotal story was one morning we woke up right after we had just started this, and someone was like, "Trump did a Triller." <laughs> we're like, "What?" This is before anybody even knew who we were. And he did a challenge called a MAGA challenge, which was, hey, people come on and do your best rap on Triller and the winner will come to the White House. And um, actually, we had like half our engineering team threaten to quit if we didn't take it down. And it wasn't even, um, he was the president at the time, and it wasn't even like, he didn't say anything political. He just said, do this. And we ended up having to take it down because we, we didn't want to lose employees. And then there was one other instance where um, they were, uh, when he was talking about banning TikTok, clearly we were a kind of a natural competitor. So he was very vocal about, I think Junior was a little bit senior, about, hey, look, there's an American alternative to Trello. They didn't have ownership. They, didn't, they weren't investors. We weren't sitting there, you know, giving them money to do it. They just, I think, saw and went, look, there's this viable option that is similar. So it's not like we're trying to take something away. And I think that's why we became somewhat associated with them. But but we don't talk to them. We don't okay. you know, pay them. Uh, after the fight, there was this big uh, challenge to Jake um, from you and the team and Vitor, $30 million, Thanksgiving weekend, uh, one year anniversary of your first card. What is the status of that offer? Um, I'm not sure if we got a response from Jake yet. We were waiting for kind of a formal response, but I think... Well, he was well, on the show. So, he was on my show last week, and he said, "Put it, um, you know, put it, put put the money into you know uh, uh, an account, and and we'll see that you have the thirty million, and then we'll we'll talk about it." I think that was his answer. Well, we would easily do that, but he knows because we've paid him lots of money. He knows that we have the money, so uh, you know, I would. Yes, listen, we'll we'll gladly try that. I don't know if I believe it, and I, I don't want to get into. I. I Think very highly of Jake, so I don't want to get into a pissing contest back and forth of you know, you know, but 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 he's made more than that from us in general. So uh, you know, he knows that we have it. Um, what I do think, however, and this is something we didn't really think about, is that the Oscar De La Hoya Vitor fight on Thanksgiving, if we can make this happen, has just become much more interesting hmm. because for all those people who seem to be upset at Vitor. Um, for what just happened with Holyfield, you've just made this a much more personal fight, if you will. Um, and Oscar becomes somewhat of not just, you know, his own golden boy, but coming in for revenge for 
Holyfield. And so we are in talks with Oscar about having him fight Vitor um, on Thanksgiving weekend, Saturday, and making it, calling it the revenge. Okay. So kind of moving on from the Jake thing, would that be fair? We're not moving on because, look, we've got Vitor wants to fight a lot. So right. we would do both. Um, and I would, oh, I'm going to look into, I'm sorry I missed the show last week. I was, we, as you probably, I don't know if you know, but we had another show on Tuesday, the yes, Trevor show. Uh, the ja, so, ja Rule and, um, and Fat Joe, right? Yeah, but we also had a boxing. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. And which was a great card, by the way. Like, like I, I loved it. It was just, um, it was, it was true boxing. It was pure form. Even, even the haters, where they writing these articles? Oh, this fight was terrible. And I well, but on Tuesday night, I went to this trailer fight and great fights. And then back to, oh, Holyfield, God, they suck. Um, anyway, it was really funny. I was laughing. I'm like, so they like put this paragraph in there of like how great our Tuesday fights were. But um, no, they wouldn't be mutually exclusive. I just think that there's a very big opportunity right now to capitalize on, I'll call it those non-boxing, the boxing world who isn't necessarily a purist. But the boxing world who is looking at it saying, hey, this was just Vitor being unfair to Holyfield, which I don't agree with when I watch the fight. I think a lot of what Holyfield is saying is true. Like, I think he got his foot stepped on. I think he's, by the way, he's swinging to knock that guy into space. That's why he swung himself into the ropes. And, you know, I think it did get unfairly stopped. Not commenting on whether he should be fighting or not 15. But, um, but I think that there's opportunities for both. And I think... Uh, Vitor is one of those who says he's willing to fight like every month. So um, not that I condone that either, um, but we will probably do both. I think we'll probably try and do the Oscar fight first um, because Oscar was in such good fighting shape. And now that he's recovering from COVID, you know, we don't want him to lose that fighting shape. Mm -hmm. And I think Jake needs to get back into fighting shape from what I understand. I could be wrong. Oh, now you're throwing um, shade at Jake. What are you talking about? He just fought like two weeks ago. No, what he, but not shade like that. What I mean is he said after the fight, I want to take a break. Oh, right. But he's a Showtime guy. How could that fight even happen? I thought he only had one more fight at Showtime. Oh, so you're saying you want him to fight that one and then, and then yeah, we connect. Are you, are you guys on good terms, time. business terms, personal terms? Like, are you guys cool? Yeah. I mean, we were never like tight friends or right. not tight friends. But I, there's nothing, no bad blood or, you know. So you'd like, be willing to do business with him again if the opportunity oh, was. Absolutely. Okay. hundred percent. I think Jake's one of the hardest working people I've ever seen in the business. And, uh, he proves the, the impossible, you know, like he proves you don't have to be born at six years old fighting in the ring right. to become a boxer. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, the way I, that's what I mean by he needs time. So he says, put money in the bank in the bank. He'd have to go do a showtime fight first. So he has one more left as I understand it and us. And he mentioned, at least from what I heard that he wanted to take a break for a little while. So, what we probably do is do Vitor, Oscar in November. So I mean, Oscar's okay with it. I know Vitor is. And then um, have Jake hopefully do his second Woodley fight, I think it is, on Showtime. And then um, and then have ours go. Uh, you have, you, have uh, you know, poked the Dana White Bear uh, a few times over the last few months. Um, with John Jones, with GSP, tried to make that fight. Are you going to keep that up? Or are you, are you moving on? Are you going to keep, you know... Uh, I think that he gets fired up when, when people try to challenge his business. You know that. You don't need me to tell you that. Um, how do you feel about that relationship right now? Are you going to keep trying to poke him or are you moving on? You know, so it's weird because I don't know him. I've actually never met him. Um, I've called him, as he said, pointed out during a press conference one, this fucking guy won't stop calling me. <laughs> and, you know, and I probably did call him, I don't know, 10 times, texted him. Just saying, hey, I think there's some great things we can do to help each other. And I do because we're not competitive. I'm not trying to take his business. And I think one of the things that I saw we could do was help the fighters get paid more on the times they're not fighting for him. Mm -hmm. And it would solve a problem where a lot of people obviously look at the fighters pay and the discrepancy in pay. And we all know the issue. It's not a secret. Right. Mm -hmm. And so my whole thing was, why not let us? When they're kind of on off time, have them box, not compete in MMA, get paid big dollars or bigger dollars, right? Make, so they make good money. Also, we help a lot in terms of increasing their social presence. And they come right back to the UFC happy with some extra money, more followers, which hopefully means more, more followers for his fights. For some reason, he just doesn't want anything to do with that. And he loves to shit on us, which is 
fine. I don't see it as poking the bear as much as just I'm going to continue to point out, like, you're not paying your fighters fairly. And I've offered a solution. It's not like I'm just throwing mud. I mean, everybody loves to throw mud. And you know that, like, if in there, anybody that comes in, like, they're going to throw mud at us no matter what we do. Like, that's just the way it's going to be. And that's fine. I'm used to it. We have thick skin. We're here for the long run. We ain't going anywhere, no matter what anybody wants to say. We're very well capitalized. Um, people will see that soon when we, uh, you know, approach our our uh, public offering. But the 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 truth is that we're offered a solution. I'm not just saying, hey, screw you. You're not paying your fighters. I'm saying, Dana, like, I okay, your model works for you. I can help make that model better because people are complaining about your pay. So why not let me help you? And it doesn't hurt you. Fair enough. Um, I don't. I don't think he's going to take your offer, but I, I, I understand where you are coming from. Uh, three uh, very quick ones, if I could, for you. Are you going public soon? Um, so I'm not legally allowed to answer yes or no, but okay. I can tell you that our plans are um, to be a a uh, to have a a what's the words I have to use to have some type of um, offering yeah. that will be in the public markets in the near term. An IPO, I think it's called. I'm not good at this stuff. Near term 2021? Uh, uh, our goal is by the end of 2021, and I'm not allowed to use the word IPO. Either, okay. So I'm I, sorry. I, I did not say that. See, I know nothing about this stuff, so I apologize. I don't want to get you in trouble. Um, uh, the the other one, okay, so uh, you have Teofimo Lopez fighting October 2nd. Is that happening? Is this finally going to happen, the Lopez fight? Yeah, we, we I, I, I'll give you some breaking news. We're, we're, we're trying um, to put it onto the 16th instead of the second for one reason. We just realized the Raiders game is that Monday night against the second. Okay. Which I don't think we want to go against. And then we started looking at what else is that week. And you've got the playoffs the next night and you've got um, a big fight. I forgot the fight was that weekend. But what we really want to do is do it at Barclays on the 16th with um, a full versus connected to it. Okay. So um, we're, it's not official. We're still as of now on the second, but there is a big discussion going on with his management. And um, we, the IBF already said, okay, as long as the the fighters approve it, obviously. Putting a versus on there, as you know, I think you saw, I don't know if you saw, but our last versus broke records again. We were the second most watched show of the entire year of any show. Wow. Um, only first to our last versus before that, um, which is, uh, it was over almost 6 million concurrent viewers. So to be able to bring that audience to the Tia Fimo fight and pair them together, which is what we're trying to do because there's a crossover of that, especially since he's from Brooklyn, if we can put it, you know, at, at Barclays. I think it's it's a great day. Um, you know, there is a UFC, I know, um, and there is a, a another, you know, kind of, uh, I think uh, maybe a PBC match, but I think it's, from all the dates we're seeing, it's kind of the only one that makes a lot of sense without pushing it out too far. Will Anderson fight for you again? Anderson Silva, will he be on an upcoming card? Yeah, we have a. Um, I think we have a some options with him, and we 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 he fought well, and we'd love to have him fight again. But no so opponent date or anything like that. No, we're gonna. Talk, you know, it's been a, obviously we just finished Tuesday's yeah. fight, so we're kind of just doing our post recap. But we will be uh, working on that for this year as well. Um, and um, you know, I think uh, I know that Anderson and. Um, Vitor want to fight, but I Vitor, you know, got to. There's only so many times Vitor. For Vitor. Um, Vitor actually said he will. He, you know what he said to me when he wanted to fight? He said, "I'll take Jake and Logan same day back to back." Yeah, and, and I said, "I don't think they're going to yeah. do that, Vitor." Uh, <laughs> I thought the Peter Khan hiring was a very interesting one. Uh, this is very inside boxing, but why did he leave the company? You know, relatively quickly after joining. Um, so Peter's a wonderful human being. will be a friend of mine forever. His, his, I don't want to give any personal stuff away, but he's dealing with some family matters okay. that he needed to tend to. And he knows he's always welcome back and we love him and we support him. And, um, you know, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he's not back with us in the near future, but for right now, he just needs to focus on his family. Fair enough. Um, I appreciate the time, Ryan. I, I can pepper you with the, I love the business of, of fighting uh, but unfortunately, we have run out of time. So thank you very much uh, for the time, for coming on, for answering the questions. Good luck in October. Um, thanks for the little nugget on uh, on Teofimo Lopez. We'll see if that comes to fruition. And uh, I wish you guys the best. I, I I hope that you guys realize that, you know, at least on my end, 
when I'm critical, it's not because I'm rooting for you guys to fail or rooting for your demise. I uh, just want the best for the fighters, the business, and, and everyone involved. So we, we will never, you'll never hear me complain when someone critiques and gives their opinion. And frankly, we take it all to heart. So like we're learning just as much as, you know, we're building. And so when I read something, if it's by, you know, someone like yourself who's been in this business forever, I, I do take it to heart. We read it, we digest it, we say, is there something we should have done different? Is this something we should take in? A lot of times we do. So I will never, we'll never be upset with um, critique or criticism, especially if it's, you know, to make our business better. Thank you, Ryan. Talk to you soon. Thanks so much. All right. There he is. Ryan Cavanaugh of Triller. Appreciate